<sighs> Dear viewer, what what are we going to do? It's a it's a it's an, it's an interesting situation. I mean, Rocket Lake, eight cores, the newest generation. It's a new microarchitecture. Intel's done a lot of stuff in the silicon. This is not just a rehash. I mean, we went from like <laughs> Sky Lake to well, there's Cascade Lake, and uh, you know. This is a new microarchitecture. This is actually genuinely different. And in any other time in history, everybody would be super excited about these. But they use a lot of power because they're on an older process node that's been optimized. And that's distracting everybody, I think. And so, the impossible. This is kind of the impossible ITX motherboard. Thunderbolt 4. Power delivery exceeding 250 watts in an ITX form factor. I mean, usually when you're building small form factor, cooling, that's a serious consideration. But you can do it. You can build a small form factor Intel system around this i7, which is less than 400 US, which I think is a good deal. You can also get the i5, the unlocked i5, for about 240, 230, 240 US, give or take, at the time of this video. That's a good deal. Six cores for that speed, for that amount of money, that's a really good deal. And the i5 is a little easier to keep cool than the i7. But I wasn't expecting this motherboard to be able to keep up with its desktop counterparts. Its VRM, its power delivery, is an 8 plus 2 setup. I mean, a lot of the other Z590 motherboards that we've taken a look at are like 16 plus 2 or 16 plus 2 and beyond. This thing has a single 8-pin power connector, although a lot of the 850-watt ITX power supplies are including a second CPU power connector, but it didn't need it. 250 watts, 5.1 gigahertz all-core, it did it. It did it fine. Let's take a deeper look. I love, I don't, they're just so cute. Look, it's so little. What a tiny motherboard box. My goodness. Now full disclosure, Asus sent me this one because I asked for it. Because I saw it and I wondered. In the box, we've got an ROG keychain, a number of ROG zip ties, SATA cables, M.2 screws. This motherboard has two M.2 slots. We'll take a look at that. This looks like some sort of weird USB breakout. We've got a nice Wi-Fi antenna. More M.2 screws because, you know, there's two. Ah, digital RGB header. All right, so first up, this is LGA 1200, which means it's designed for 10th and 11th generation Intel CPUs. So you could get a 10850K and run it on this machine just fine. But if you do that, you're giving up one of your M.2 slots because that primary M.2 is PCI Express 4 directly to the CPU. It's dedicated lanes, which is great. More bandwidth. The other PCI Express slot is through the chipset, which is a PCI Express by 8 connection, which is awesome, on 11th gen Rocket Lake or PCI Express by 4 connection on 10th generation CPU. So keep that in mind. It's a big upgrade having that much connectivity both through the chipset and for storage. It really is a big upgrade on the 10th gen. Now, in case you're wondering, this X16 slot through the CPU, the BIOS does support bifurcation. So if you have a case that has a riser card and two by eight slots, you can get X8, X8 out of that with this motherboard. Remember the Sliger case that had the breakout cable? That's limited to PCI Express 3, but if you use that, you can use it with this motherboard and get two PCI Express by eight slots, which is awesome. Asus ran out of real estate, so they went vertical. <laughs> the audio on this is vertical, as well as the two M.2, so it's like kind of an M.2 sound card sandwich, if you will. At the rear I.O., we've got one Thunderbolt cable, that's USB Type-C, uh, up to 5 volts, 3 amps, 15 watt charging support. One USB 3.2 Gen 2x2 Type-C, so that's a 20 gigabit USB Type-C port. USB Type-C, the paradox that is, oh, you can plug it in, but it's not necessarily going to work the same. We've also got uh, one USB 3.2 Gen 2 port, which is a Type-A, that's 10 gigabit, and one USB 3.2 Gen 1, which is 5 gigabit. We also have four USB 2.0 ports at the rear, one of which is for BIOS flashback. So this cable is a funky USB 2.0 splitter. 
it's normally you have some peripherals like power supplies and maybe you have a LCD water pump uh, that use a USB header, but it's typically just one device that uses the USB header. And USB headers support two devices. So what this does is it breaks out one USB 2.0 header into two USB 2.0 headers. It doesn't actually give you double the number of ports. It just rearranges the pins so that two different USB 2 devices like water pumps or power supplies or whatever accessories you might have will be able to share one single header. This is awesome. Asus should sell this separately because this is a really handy cable. Also at the rear I.O. we've got the Intel Wi-Fi 6E, that's 802.11, A, B, G, N, A, C, A, X, you know, 2.4 or 5 or 6 gigahertz, Wi-Fi 6E, it's the future. That of course supports Bluetooth and all that stuff. We've also got a wired Ethernet port, that's the Intel i225V 2.5 gigabit adapter. And this is the latest version of the silicon, so hopefully no hardware bugs that uh, plague the first couple versions of that chipset. Now the onboard audio connections here, we've just got the three, mic in, line out, and line in. This audio solution is not atypical for an ITX motherboard, but if you were looking for something with say an optical SPDIF connection, uh, you're gonna have to look to one of the higher end SKUs from Asus. This is, of course is the Strix Z590i ITX, but you've got a couple other options from Asus if you want something that's even higher end. Below the four USB 2.0 ports, you've also got HDMI. This is HDMI from the Intel chipset. However, this is HDMI 2.0B with a little bit more because I've got that CX monitor that's OLED 4K 120 hertz. Uh, HDR, no. 2.1, HDMI 2.1B, no, HDMI 2, 4K 60 hertz, that's what you get. At least that's what I got with the drivers. Hopefully that'll change, maybe possibly in the future. If it does, look for a pinned comment below. Finally, at the rear I.O., we do have the BIOS flashback button. In terms of other onboard connectivity, we do have that USB 2.0 header I was mentioning. USB 3.0, that's two five gigabit ports for your front panel connections, one USB Type-C connection, four SATA ports, and three four pin fan headers, which is really quite a lot for an ITX motherboard. We've got a 5050 header at the top of the board and a digital RGB header on the, uh, the mezzanine riser place where the M.2 card is, so it's pretty awesome. The mezzanine also has that USB 2.0 header I was mentioning before, and of course your front panel audio connection. The littlest peat. Now, in order to really get to know a motherboard, we've got to do a build. And if we're really gonna do a build, we need something special, something unique, something exciting. Wait, did he say a build video with the Z590i gaming Wi-Fi, the ROG Strix motherboard? Okay. This is a different build. <laughs> You're gonna stay tuned and get subscribed for this one. This is the Meshalicious. But you're gonna have to, uh, gonna have to wait. Yeah, we can cram a 3090 in here. Yeah, we can do a full fat 280 millimeter radiator, although it's equipped with a 240 right now. This was a really interesting build. And this is what the Z590 was in. And this is what I did all of my testing and benchmarks on. But you're gonna have to wait for the build video. I'm Wendell, this is level one, I'm signing out. And I'll see you later.